Hey guys and girls, Bored now back with you on this video. I will be talking about the first episode of the new version of Stephen King's novel The Stand, episode one, and it's called The End. So this is on Stars Play now. I think if you're in the US, you've already got four episodes that you can watch, just the one so far in the UK, and episodes go up on a Sunday if you're in the UK so people know that there was like a famous mini series version of this in the 90s and sort of got mixed reviews I, I'm not sure if I ever saw it or not but there is some love for that original mini series and of course it's always a, a big talking point when a, when a king work like this is at adapted and very often they're not the best in the world obviously there are some standouts um this one is very timely because it, it's about a virus basically that is the main setup we are based in like a small texan town and the, the sort of narrative in this seems to be jumping back and forth between the past and the present but you do have two sort of main plots one is that you have a former military officer um, played by James Marsden called Redmond, or his, his last name's Redmond, who in the past his wife has been killed in what, what I believe is a car accident, or that's what he says at one point, and he has been taken in by the military for questioning because he came into contact with this character who was infected with the virus. So that's why he's been taken in and arrested and questioned about his past and he starts obviously under duress kind of opening up at the same time they're interested in recruiting him because of his background to help out with this which he's sort of reluctant to do and at first he doesn't know a great deal about what is going on um, so that's one half of the plot the other half plot is that we we get into the tension in the small town with the government essentially like blocking everything off, shutting everything down. The sort of conspiracy theories which one character peddles about them blocking off the internet and locking that down so that people can't get access to what he sees as the truth. So it puts out this idea of, um, you know, the the government potentially being responsible for this so they wouldn't want that truth getting out there so it, it kind of gets into conspiracy theories as well but on the other end of the plot you've got these characters these younger characters Harold and one of his neighbours um, um, Frankie or Fr I'll have to get this this is terrible I'm sorry um Franny, sorry, Franny, Frankie, Franny, yeah, and their neighbours, um, they're essentially the only two people who appear to be left in this town, so it quickly gets into, like, the tragedy of the whole thing, the fact that it, it's hit people really hard, and it, it's kind of this deal where if you get it in the stand, in, in this world, you you basically have little or no chance of surviving. So we see people on respirators. We we see this character of Harold at one point at home with his mother, and they have a very bitter relationship towards the end. She's on a respirator and is not, not long for this world. And the same for Franny's father. Um, he's on his way. He's dying as well, sadly. And... They become these two isolated figures in this town. They have a bit of a past because she was once his babysitter, which, just looking at the actors, that's one thing I didn't buy, just because they look about the same age to me. There might be, like, a couple of years difference, but I certainly didn't buy them. She would, there would be such a gap where she could be his babysitter, but, you know, maybe, maybe looks are deceiving. Um... But anyway, yeah, Harold clear it clearly as 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 a bit of a thing for Franny, and I'll start with talking about their plot because actually that was probably the most interesting stuff in the episode. I think the rest is kind of standard, you know, virus 
sci-fi paranoia type stuff, which which is quite well done, but it's maybe not going to set the world on fire. Um, but yeah, you do have this interesting relationship with Franny and Harold, where he clearly likes her. She's she's a bit more awkward around him. You know, she likes him enough, but maybe doesn't have that sort of feelings. Um, and I think I like that stuff because it does tap into the exploring this. You know, if you were the last two things in in, in this. Um, in this town that had been killed off and there's this tension where he's trying to convince her oh the government are in on this they know what's happening it was their fault they're trying to cover it up and she's she's just a bit more suspicious of that she's not as willing to go along with that so there's a bit of a debate over that but also just what a murky character Harold is because you know, essentially, along the way, he is spying on her. He is spying through through the fence, through the hole in the fence. And I kind of wondered at one point if that was just just because he wanted to make sure there was someone there, like she was still around and stuff, or or just because he felt awkward talking to her. But as it goes along and you see the sort of feelings he has, has for her, I think you get the impression he, he is a being a bit, you know, kind of creepy and, and sleazy in, in that sense. I mean, not not necessarily in, in, like, a nasty way or anything, but then he is maybe stepping over a line there. But... There is that sort of um, conflicting sort of perspective where he maybe is more innocent than he comes across, or or maybe he's not. I think it's sort of played like that. Um, and I think as the drama plays out, he does become a bit more aggressive because he's determined that they must move away, they must um, go to essentially where the centre is, which is dealing with all this, and, and sort of rebuild their lives and go to where the best help possible is. But that's all wrapped up in the fact that he has feelings for her and, and wants to go away with her. And, and that at times comes across as quite sort of self-centred. He is a very murky character like that. But for the most part, I did enjoy their scenes because I really like the actors. I think they... They had good chemistry. I think there is some clunky dialogue at times. That you know, there's a like, there's like a more intimate scene between them where he's co trying to convince her that this is kind of a good idea, and it's meant to be a more sensitive humor moment. But you've got a bit of an indie, you know, pixie indie vibe to it, where you've got music and. And just some of his lines, I think some of the dialogue was a bit clunky in that scene. Um, but it's hard to know what to think about his character, whether you're meant to like him that much or not. But I'll talk in a minute as things unravel. There's, there's, it, it does go places. But one, one scene I like, which is really hard to watch, but is basically where Franny has to bury her father. And you see her digging the hole in the garden and it's when Harold first comes along and peeps through the hole and and they, they, they do start talking and obviously she's very upset and distraught and kind of is polite to him but doesn't want to talk too long um, and in the end they kind of come around and say well we are the only two people left in the town but I did that that was a really strong scene the scene when she has to bury her father because you know, you see her just going through the whole process because obviously with the virus in town and everything shut down, yeah, you've got limited options. It is very hard to, to bury anyone when there's no one around. So she has to do it herself. So you see her having to turn her father over off the bed and fix, physically drag him. It's it's really tortured to watch, but it's really well done. It's very physical, like the sound of it and stuff. And and at one point, she she tries to commit suicide. And again, that's another one of those scenes where Harold is there. He's kind of spying on her, and he sort of bursts in, like when she's trying to do it in like the shower. And that scene again is a bit over the top, but I think you're just meant to think then, hey, this is Harold. He, he, yeah, he is a bit 
obviously it's good that he's there because he saves her, but then maybe he does have his own motives and they're, they're quite sort of selfish. Um, but for the most part, the stuff with them and the relationship, and I thought the actors did a good job. Um, and I do actually like that. I do like that they, they sort of explore stuff like relationships or that kind of thing where if if you are in love with someone, if you want to progress a relationship, you know, then you might, again, rather cynically use the conditions you're under, like this, this sort of virus in the town. And you, it sort of plays with that how far is too far sort of thing. And is he doing it because he cares about her? You know, the whole... I'm there for you, but also then trying to persuade her to leave town with him. Um, it's interesting stuff. Um, and then we get the stuff, it's sort of weird because at the end of the episode, we find out that he's a writer, or he appears to be a writer, then that he's writing a story that appears very similar to what's happening in the town. But we cut to this scene, which I can only assume is in the future. Because we see them in another town, and basically the Redmond character is is now with with Franny, and she's also pregnant with his baby. Now I'm gonna assume this is real when this happened in the future, just because Redmond mentions about his ex-wife, who's now dead, and well, his widow, um, uh, so I'm sort of assuming that might turn out to be Franny, but because of the whole writing device, the fact that you see him writing this story, I was <laughs> a little bit unsure what was real and what, what was in what sort of time, um, but I'm going to assume maybe this is real and he's like incorporated it into this story. I think maybe there's, there's a sense of, you know... Um, Yes, Stephen King as well, again, the writer, and it's been very, quite meta with, with that sort of stuff. But it's almost, yeah, in this story, Harold potentially could become more heroic, could become more of a hero. Um, and it, it also hints, and that's why he wants to leave town, because he kind of says, you know, in Boulder, he's just Harold. But, you know, in the West, he could become, like, I think it says a force or powerful or something like that. So it's this I, I, idealized sort of idea. Um, so there's a lot of good stuff in, in the episode. It's a solid pilot, not perfect, probably better than I thought. Um, as I said, some of the stuff with the actual virus and Redman in, in the base and stuff, it was okay, it wasn't amazing, some of it was a bit standard on the nose, I think there's some flashback stuff which maybe could have been lost. Also, I think another issue is then, um, it does have that feel of a streaming show where maybe sometimes it's trying to show you it's credentials a bit too much the fact that we can be edgy we can be grotesque we can be in your face with and obviously I like that stuff if it works and obviously it is a plus the fact that it's not so neutered down um but at times it was a bit in your face and um, yeah they could have dulled it back a bit I think so there are flaws with I think the storytelling um I mean, we've also got the Whoopi Goldberg character who briefly appears in this episode. She appears in a, in a dream to Franny and kind of gives her details of this place she needs to go. But I know she's going to play play a much bigger part. Um, I did like the scene, actually, with the J.K. Simmons general and the Redman character because he sort of um, basically there's this character of this guard who's basically has been told to kill everyone who has the virus. So, and even though um, he's got the virus and is dying and stuff, that's not going to stop him carrying out this order. And essentially you've got this isolated figure played by J.K. Simmons, great bit of casting, who um, he, he basically helps Redmond because he sees him as maybe the only one who can save, you know, civilization in this town. Um, so he actually tells him how to escape the base, and he 
he himself has been affected, which you see as the scene plays out, and it's just quite... It's really well acted because of the way it slowly sort of comes out of him and he physically sells it. Um, and, yeah, in the end, he, he, he gives, like, Redman the information and he actually then sort of kills himself, to, you know, sacrifice and all that. And there's a touching scene where he actually, before he does it, he reads out a passage from the book which his daughter gave him and there is something quite moving. Um... So that's the meat of the episode. Overall, I, I think it's it's a it's a solid episode, and I I did enjoy it. Um, as I said, one or two issues, and have to see which direction it goes in. It could go either way, but there was enough good things in the first episode for me to say, yeah, this is a promising series. So that's the stand episode one. It's called um, the end. Overall, I'm quite positive on it. And episode two goes up in the UK tomorrow, so you can expect a review of that quite soon. But I'll be back with more TV and film reviews coming soon. But thanks for listening, and goodbye.